We're here to talk about Tomb Raider and you're watching Connected Digital World. <laughs> During CES week here in Vegas, I was lucky enough to be invited to play multiplayer Tomb Raider. While I was there, I got to interview Daryl Gallagher, who's the studio head for Crystal Dynamics. We talk about multiplayer, Tomb Raider itself, Camilla Luddington, Britishisms, and we also reveal an exclusive. Enjoy the interview. So, do you want to introduce yourself yeah. and tell us what you do? My name's Daryl Gallagher. I'm the studio head for Crystal Dynamics, and I oversee the Tomb Raider franchise. So what do you do as the studio head then? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, it's, it's everything, basically. Um, I mean, my, I, I work mainly with the, the teams to make sure that we're, we're producing the games we produce at Crystal. Um, so I work a lot with the, the creative teams, a lot with the marketing teams, a lot with the production teams. And it's wide ranging, to be honest. It's everything, um, everything you could possibly imagine I'm involved in. Um, uh, my background is is development, uh, creative. I've been you know 15, 16 years making games, so I'm, I'm still designing games, basically, even as a studio head. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about uh, Tomb Raider multiplayer, which we've been seeing today. Yeah, well, it's something that we started about two two years ago now. Um, so we originally, when we set out to reboot the franchise, which was longer than two years, um, at Crystal we we definitely had desires to do to do multiplayer. In fact, actually, we, we started with Guardian of Light, where I said, hey, come on, let's not talk about it, which we'd done you know, every iteration before. Hey, hey, what about multiplayer? Maybe we should do multiplayer. But it never came to fruition, so I said, okay, let's, let's take a smaller project and, and let's try it. You know, let's not talk about it, let's, let's just let's do it. So that's how Guardian of Light was born. Uh, it was almost like this Pixar short. And what we see uh, the multiplayer in, in the reboot as is sort of an extension from that. You know, we got some great learnings, we got some technology from doing Guardian of Light. And we, we really had fun doing it as well. I mean, it's a creative challenge more than anything. That, you know, it's something we hadn't done before. Um, so at the same time, we wanted to make sure that we were delivering on Tomb Raider and Lara's journey. And that was sort of Crystal's focus. And as we looked into our ideas for multiplayer, we really felt we really felt we had our hands full, and we wanted to make sure that we absolutely nailed the single player experience, which was you know, very near and dear to our hearts because we were doing this origin story for, for Lara. And so we got in touch with with our sister studio in Montreal, and we spoke to them about the opportunity to do multiplayer. And they said, "That's great. We'd love to work with you on it." And lo and behold, you know, we built built a team. And so two years later, we're here we are today. Um, so that's kind of how it came about. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Because it's certainly when you think <coughs> you don't think multiplayer. Yes. Well, the main thing is, is it's not trying to be something like a Call of Duty, right? That's the, the kings of multiplayer, and, and that really isn't for us. So it was more about trying to design something that worked within our franchise and worked within this, this, this iteration of the game. So um, thematically, it had to fit. So this uh, sort of sense of survival and banding together and having scavengers versus survivors, that's all carried over from the single player. But also it gives us a chance to actually use some of the unique mechanics we've got in single player. So Traversal, for example, is one of them, um, where we have verticality in these maps. So it's, it's things you can't really do in first person. You know? and sort of have jumps and traversal and zip lines in quite the same way we can. So from a third person perspective, using our mechanics, uh, the traversal mechanics, the, the exploration mechanics, obviously the, the combat mechanics, the pickaxe, the zip lines, all the cool stuff that we, we built for single player uh, translated over really nicely to multiplayer as well. Uh, so that was one of the kind of unique things that we, we felt that we could do with, with the mechanics we had. And then sort of the personality of the island comes through as well, and that was very important for us. We put a lot of emphasis um, around sort of the personality of this island that you're trapped on in, in single player. And we wanted that to come through as well. So the environmental hazards, the traps, um, the game changers, which um, you know, we have a game changer on display in one of the maps here where you, know, you can ring a bell uh, and a sandstorm sweeps through and uh, if you've rung the bell then you get an advantage tactically where you can actually sort of see through the, the, the sandstorm uh, whereas the other side can't and that can literally change the way the outcome of the match happens. So, yeah. 
obviously, so far you've only talked about two of the levels, if you like, yeah. multiplayer. Do you want yeah. to tell us a little bit about those? Um, yeah, so two of the, the modes you mean, or um, yeah, so we, we, we have Deathmatch, uh, which is one of the modes on display here, and then Rescue Mode. Um, so with Deathmatch, I mean, obviously it's something that people have played in, in other franchises and other multiplayer games. And that's sort of, you know, familiar, and we wanted to make sure it was something that, that we included, uh, that people could be, you know, they could pick it up, they could easily play it, and um, obviously it has our flavour in there as well, in terms of having traps and uh, pickups and power-ups and sort of the two made of flavour. Um, but we also have included, you know, in this demo today, Rescue, which is um, more about bounding together with survivors and you have more objectives in, in this multiplayer mode of Rescue mode where you have to go and uh, pick up med medipacks as survivors and sort of take them to a sort of safe zone. So you have to be very protective of the person that's carrying the medipack. Uh, so it's about banding together, it's about protecting the person with the medipack, it's about um, making sure that you're working together as a unit. And on the flip side, it's, it's asymmetrical, whereas scavengers, which are the opponents, you know, their job is to hunt survivors down and you know their job isn't to rescue many packs and uh, you know they don't win the match that way they win the match by actually you know, killing a certain number of survivors so they have different goals uh, you know opposing goals and you know each each side has to work together on their own goals uh, and that's sort of a more unique flavor that sort of is very in keeping with our single player mode let's talk a little bit about single player obviously yeah. we're about well, less than two months now to yeah Congratulations. And ticking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, Sweating here. Yeah, I was say, so it's actually nice to be taking the time yeah, out yeah. To, to come yeah, today. So in between you. emails, looking at like bugs and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, That's good. Yeah. Um, so I've played the first three hours. Yeah. And I've noticed there's obviously subtle differences in yeah. the version that I played a few months ago. So, yeah. So uh, games come on and you're okay. Um, why the change? Well, I mean, as what we did on, on this particular project is we really wanted to have a long period of time in what we, I guess what we call post-production in a way. Um, it, it's sort of a little bit non-traditional in how we've made this game. We had a, a really long period after we had the game together. Um, you know, it was all playable start to finish. And, you know, everything was there and, and we, we sort of had it, had it in the can, almost like principal photography in a way in, in making a movie. And what we found in, in sort of making many games is you, you don't really have enough time to sort of make it better. Um, okay, you know, when you tend to sort of pull a game together, all this work goes in, you polish it up, you fix bugs, and you, you get it out the door. And we wanted to make sure this game was the best game we could possibly make. So what we did is, is left uh, enough time for us actually to sort of revisit the content and revisit the game as a whole and get feedback from not only ourselves playing it, you know, as we sit back and say, well, how do we actually feel now? We see sort of all the ideas and everything we, we wanted to do all together, start to finish. How do we feel? But also get feedback from consumers as well. So we had people come in and play it, give us great feedback on what they liked and what they didn't like. And as a result of that, as well as sort of seeing it at shows and that sort of stuff, we, we made edits. So it's almost like post-production editing, where it's like, well, actually, we're going to snip and chop and refine and polish and tweak uh, and we had a period of that before locking the game down and, uh, and bug fixing it completely and getting it out the door which is really I think how we've we've managed to hone and, uh, and polish the game into something that is what we think is quite special now. Well, certainly it, uh, the, the flow seems to be a lot better. Yeah. Um, not that there was a problem with it before yeah. <laughs> but, it, uh, but obviously for example the, the scene where um, Lara runs into Sam yeah. um, and somebody else yeah. and the version that obviously you guys have, have had out there for people to play up until now yeah. um, was fairly obvious he was a bad guy uh, yeah. and obviously yeah. Lara pulls the bow and we've all seen the pictures whereas now she falls asleep in front of the fire, she wakes yeah. up, they're gone, she's not sure what's going yeah. on. So that, that's really nice, it's, it's yeah. a subtle change but I it think is. It, it makes the story flow better. Yeah, very observant of you, uh, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, a lot of things, I mean, there was gameplay tweaks and also story tweaks as well. So, gauging people's understanding of the story, sort of how we, we felt about how the story was presented. We really did go in and uh, sort of take the scalpel, you know, and start carving away at the edges that we felt were a little bit rough, and, and some of those are reflected in the observations you've seen. If you're very observant, you'll see a few of them. Uh -huh. um, so you, you gave me a little bit of exclusive information earlier. Uh oh, right oh was that off the record? <laughs> uh, Lara's favourite food. Oh, okay. <laughs> Care to share that on camera? 
Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it's not a big secret, but um, uh, I was I was just explaining uh, sort of some Britishisms. Is that a word? Uh, maybe. Um, so we're obviously both British, uh, and there's, there's a scene where the, the the group that she's she's banded together with the, the crew members are reminiscing about home comforts, uh, and they're talking about what they miss because they're on this deserted island. Uh, and Lara, Lara reminisces and, and she reminisces about Jaffa cakes, which if you're British you will, you will recognise and probably put a smile on your face. So she's very British through and through. How have you guys found it, because obviously there's, because Lara is obviously very British, um, how have you found that there's obviously there's quite a lot of, as you say, Britishisms <laughs> in the game? I mean, there's the scene early on in the game where she um, runs into Roth and basically he passes out and she calls him a northern bastard. Yeah. Um, which, for, for, for us Brits, yeah. you know, we get Ma that, we understand Makes sense. That. Yeah. Um, I can Happens every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I can imagine that a lot of people outside of the UK would probably go, Okay, why? You, well, yeah, what, what does that mean? Yeah, there's a few lines in there actually. There's, you know, and you'll see them when you play the game through. Um, you know, I, I think that as long as it doesn't completely confuse people, which we hope it doesn't, and they're, they're dropped in here and there, I think it's important to retain that sense of you know, her identity and where she comes from. Um, and, and we felt that we didn't want to sort of sand, sand down those edges, say we're so, so smooth that it, she, she didn't have those you know, essential traits that you know, tells you where she comes from. So you may not get them all, um, but they're, they're in there for the British folk, that's for sure. And obviously, if you've been changing, say, some of the dialogue, or if you've yeah. had any issues because obviously Camilla's now working on Grey's Anatomy, so is it? Has it been difficult getting her back when you needed her, or is that no, a no, issue? no? Well, you, you know, there's always a bit of scheduling, but she's been amazingly flexible, uh, and you know, it's been great for her, right? She's, you know, her career's taken off, so she's in all sorts of shows now. I'm glad we got her before she was in these shows, to be honest, because we, we might have been, uh, you know, paying a lot more or something, uh, or she she might not have booked with us. But uh, you know, we were lucky to to find Camilla. Uh, sort of, you know, on, on the, the beginning of her trajectory and who knows where she'll land. But she's been such a, a big fan uh, of, of, of the game and such a big supporter of what, what we've been doing. And, you know, we've had her sort of in the studio and in, in motion capture and voice recording for, you know, two and a half years or something. So she's been you know, always game, always professional, always up for it. You know, she's been brilliant to work with, actually. She's been great. I say it's a little bit strange watching her on Grey's Anatomy with uh, an American accent. Yeah, she, it, it, yeah. And she does it very well, but it just it doesn't seem like yeah, it's Lara Croft. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> so obviously, for those people who don't know when the game's out, uh, do you want to tell us when it's out? Oh yes, Tomb Raider's out March the fifth, out on PC, 360, and PS3. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Nice to meet you. Thanks.